What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Daily Psalm, where every day we're going through one of the Psalms. Here we are on day 85 for the third time. Hallelujah. Psalm 85. For the choir director, a psalm of the sons of Korah. And before we get going, I want to go ahead and preach the gospel real quick. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. And anyone who hasn't received the free gift of salvation, anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins, and also anyone who is still living a sinful lifestyle after coming to salvation or before is going to be judged and thrown into the, into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. This first death is just the body. Our soul doesn't die. But after judgment, we're either given eternal life or the lake of fire and it's death of body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn eternal life. There's nothing we can do to earn salvation. We can't earn a right standing with God. God is holy, perfect, and righteous. And His kingdom is the same way. To, so to be able to enter His kingdom, we have to be pure. We have to be clean. We have to be perfectly righteous. And the only way to receive that is through Jesus. And that's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human. Face temptations just like us. Jesus, the Son of God. God, the Son. There's the Father and the Son. Both are God. Not the same individual. The Son of God, Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. That's Jesus Christ in Hebrew. Was born as a human. Lived a, faced temptations like us. He was born as a human lived a perfect life. He did nothing wrong, not even in his heart. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve to die, he didn't deserve any punishment. The death that he died for, the death that he died on the cross was for us. That death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross so that through him that death is taken away and we receive eternal life. Through him our sins are taken away and we receive his perfection, his righteousness, his perfect righteousness that he lived out. And we're made right with God. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means turn from your sins, turn from your wickedness, and turn to God. Follow Him. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and you call out to Him to forgive you, to save you, and you truly mean it. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God in us. Which the Holy Spirit leads you, changes your heart, and leads you to follow Him. The Holy Spirit also gives you wisdom, discernment, and understanding. In the Bible and in many things. The Holy Spirit is called the Helper. Because it helps us to do His will. If you truly mean it and you give your life to God, you truly call out to him to forgive you, to save you, to change you, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. We know it's going to be with God, with the Father, with the Son, in his kingdom, with the angels, uh, with with all the other people of God in new, not these bodies that die but new glorified immortal bodies that don't. <clears throat> Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. He wants to know you. He wants to have a relationship with you, and that's what it is. It's a relationship with God. He leads us. He corrects us. He protects us. And we follow him and serve him. Give your life to Jesus. There's not much time left. Now let's get into uh, Psalm 85. <clears throat> Here in Psalm 85... We're going to get another look at the end time captivity. See, at the beginning of the tribulation time, there's going to be a, the Bible says judgment begins in the house of God. There's going to be a, a captivity. According to one of the, it's, it was said about one of the seven churches. So at least, I would, be, I would believe at least one seventh of Christians or people who call themselves Christians are going to be taken captive by the new world order, by the beast kingdom, the antichrist kingdom, by the same people that, out, that are out here stalking and harassing me every day and watching me. 
from my understanding at the beginning of the tribulation, this is when the seals begin to open, the seals that we read about in Revelation chapter 6. And I believe they're uh, the first five seals are opened over a period of 10 days. And at the end of the 10 days, the sixth seal is open. And that's the earthquake. And that's when Jesus comes on the clouds. That's when hailstone, hailstones and coals of fire, 100-pound hailstones and coals of fire are raining down upon the earth. And we're talking about judgment. This is when Jesus comes and comes for judgment. This is when America is destroyed. This is when Israel is attacked. Two-thirds of them destroyed. This is when um, the end truly begins. But over the first four seals, the Bible says the first four horsemen were given power to, uh, to over a fourth of the earth to kill. So billions of people are going to be dying. War is going to be breaking out. Famine. Um, and the captivity as well. Many believers are going to be taken captive going to be tortured, going to be uh, killed. And we see about this captivity all throughout the Psalms and in other places in Scripture, mainly in the Psalms. Psalm 85. O Yahuwah, you showed favor to your land. You restored the captivity of Jacob. And we are a part of Jacob. Jacob is Israel. Um, so this is referring to us as believers. You restored the captivity of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. Selah. Hallelujah. You withdrew your fury. You turned away from your burning anger. Because it's... Uh, it's his junk. It's his. It's his anger. His judgment on the people of God, on his uh, people, and um, part of that judgment is going to be some of us giving into the hands of our enemies. But the the great thing is, as we read right here, he's going to restore us. Hallelujah! You withdrew all your fury. You turned away from your burning anger. Restore us, O God, of our salvation, and cause your indignation toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not, not yourself revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Hallelujah. Show us your loving kindness, O Yahuwah, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God, Yahuwah, will say. For he will speak peace to his people, to his godly ones. But let them not turn back to folly. We can't go back into, into our sin. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. And this is where the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of understanding we need to fear God we need to fear his judgment we need to fear his punishment we need to fear him because he's not playing he's not playing around surely his salvation is near to those who fear him and fear also means reverence respect him obey him That glory may dwell in our land. Loving kindness and truth have met together. Loving kindness, that's his grace, his loving kindness. The Bible says um, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth, loving kindness and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Loving kindness and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth springs from the earth. And righteousness looks down from heaven. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He sprung from the earth. Truth springs from the earth. 
He uh, he is the truth. He is the word. He is righteousness. And it's speaking about his resurrection. Truth springs from the earth. And righteousness looks down from heaven. Hallelujah. Indeed, Yahuwah will give what is good. The Lord will give what is good. And our land will yield its produce. And God refers to us as crops, as plants. And the land will yield its produce. It's speaking about during the millennial reign, the thousand year reign of Christ. Um, his people are going to flourish. And the land, the land of Israel, will yield its produce. Righteousness will go before him. And will make his footsteps into a way. Hallelujah. And uh, this righteousness will will go before him, make his footsteps into a way. Speaking about God, I guess. Well, Jesus it says righteousness looks down from heaven. Um. It might be the, it might be the, I think it might be the Father who is referred to as righteousness. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps into a way. And, um, you know, the, the Bible says, or, and Jesus said, um, the Father said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your, your footstool, until I clear the way for you, basically. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps into a way. And this also applies to us. Right, he, he is righteousness. He will go before us and make our footsteps into a way. We follow him. Hallelujah. And that's the end of uh, Psalm 85. Let's stay strong in faith, brothers and sisters. Let's be ready. Let's be right with God. Let's be... Jesus said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And that's what we need to strive for. None of us are completely perfect. But that's what we need to strive for with all our heart. And, um, you know, we all screw up from time to time. Even though we don't want to. Um, we need to... We just need to serve Him with all our heart and do His will and everything. Let's uh, shine His light. Let's show His love in everything we do. Let's be ready for the return of the Lord. There's not much time left. There's not much time left in... Um, we need to be ready. Today is April 26th. So we're three weeks from Pentecost. Today is three weeks from Pentecost. Less than three weeks until May 14th, 2021, when Israel turns 73. And, uh, you know, we're, we just got to keep watching watching how things are going to play out. We don't know exactly how things are going to play out. We know the end is near. And uh, that Jesus said, speaking about the final generation, he said, this generation will not pass away until all things are fulfilled. I believe that generation started in 1948 when Israel was reestablished as, as a nation. And because it's called the fig tree generation, the fig tree references Judah, which is the Jews, the modern day Israel. And um, according to Psalm 90, the only psalm that's a psalm of Moses. According to Psalm 90, it says uh, the years of a man are 70 years, but if by strength 80 but if so, they're full of toil and sorrow, or, or full of tribulation, in other words. If 80. And if there's supposed to be a seven-year tribulation, which Scripture seems to say that, although there are different things that indicate possibly half that time, and maybe God is going to cut that time short to half that time, the generation would end in 2028, and the beginning of the final seven years of that generation would be May 14th, less than three weeks from now. So, you know, 
We need to be ready. We need to be right with God. We don't know when this is going to come upon the world. We need to keep watching. God gives us signs. And according to my understanding, it's going to be right before summertime. So, it's, I mean, when, when it happens, whether it's this year or whatever year it is, I believe it's going to be right before summertime, May, June timeline. So, uh, let's be ready. Let's be right with the Lord. Let's overcome. Let's do His will in everything. There's not much time left. And I preached the gospel in the beginning. <clears throat> if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to Him. Just give your life. Give your life to Him. Submit your life to Him. Just uh, call on Him to forgive your sins. Call out to Him to, for to save you. To forgive you. Make that choice to follow God. To follow Jesus. It'll be the best decision you've ever made in your life. I promise you. I promise you. You'll never regret it. You'll ne never. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Repent and believe the gospel. That's the end of Psalm 85. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.